Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We're George and Martha. Hey guys. And today we'll be recapping The Real Housewives of New York City Reunion Part 2. And Ramona is in the hot seat. Never a dull moment. Oh my God. So we get the Ramona retrospective we've all been waiting for. That barrage of lies. It was very, uh, what's Tennessee Williams? Mendacity. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. And her response as soon as they end it, right? Not, oh, I'm so embarrassed. It's never a dull moment around me. <laughs> Excuse me. What do you think? You're Bethany? You created all of this. It's I love it though. I mean, she denies most of it and she gets defensive, but the way she does it is just so entertaining ramona should be on this show until the day she dies yeah yeah she's gonna be pulling this she'll be 95 years old hanging out with teenagers but then she will i mean she's trying to blame it on dimension now but then she probably will have dementia <laughs> which would be fun sorry oh my god kissing cousins yes yeah, so the harry dubin thing is somehow the first thing that comes up so what's the deal with you and harry dubin she's like oh we're just really good friends friends with benefits no, no no that was just like one time it's like kissing cousins and so he's like cousins kiss like that I, okay okay it was like kissing cousins okay so you, what is what? she thinks she's rudy giuliani all of a sudden what a, kissy cousins what about rudy giuliani he married his cousin no i didn't know that you're kidding me no married, like, first i think it's his first cousin I, well, he's been married several times. Ah, uh, but he, I think... Children? Was mar I don't know about the children, but he was he's married to his cousin or was married to his cousin. I'm not kidding. Anyway, so we move on to Ramona at the Angel Ball and the Table 62 debacle with Dorinda. And so he's like, how do you explain? Well, actually, what leads up to this is that she lies about Harry Dubin. Yeah. He's like, so if it was a no nothing thing, why did you lie? I didn't say I didn't make out with Harry Dubin. And then they play it. Of course, she's like, okay, okay. I was embarrassed, right? And he's like, okay, well, that's lie one. Speaking of your lies, what's the deal with this table 62 thing? And she's like, okay, you know what? I may be ageless, but my mind is not so ageless. I'm, uh, you know, you should still buy Ageless by Ramona. I'm working on a supplement for brain health. Now, is my mind is not so ageless. <gasps> Blame it on dementia. I cannot. We're like grabbing each other watching this. It's so fucking funny. The way she will come up with anything. I'm next, I'm gonna say, she's gonna be like, okay, Luann, we have a lot in common because I had a little bit of a drinky problem and now I'm sober and I just don't remember some of the things I say, okay? Right? Blame it on the wet brain. Yeah, <laughs> anything, anything. I, I kept thinking of, you know how we're trying to get Janine Pirro on the show? <laughs> how she would have responded to this because she would have been invited to something like this. I just have to say something, singer. I was at the Angel Ball, and it was made very clear to you that you were seated at 62, and you plopped yourself down at my table. 61. I can so picture this shit. <laughs> and then she would, she would, Janine would talk about Laura Trump. Laura Trump was not abused by yeah. your behavior. You took her seat. She's the president's daughter-in-law. <laughs> Shameless, ageless. Shameless by Ramona. <laughs> and Kimberly Gargoyle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, then Andy's like, all right, Ramona, we need to talk about another lie. Oh, I didn't realize that was a lot. <laughs> I said I didn't remember. Oh, okay. After all this, she's so busted. She's so, but they played the tape in their faces. Yeah. And she's, I didn't realize that was a lot. <laughs> what was this one? Oh, saying no about Sonia going to her birthday? Was that Oh, it? yeah, well, they move on to that. He's like, Ramona, you said that you had no say. And then they show the clip. Nope, no Sonia. Nope, don't invite Sonia. <laughs> and, oh, my God. And everyone's like, as soon as they cut back, Caught with your pants down, pants down, pants down, pants on fire, <laughs> red-handed. She's like, look, okay, 
I wanted a birthday party that was special, private for me. I did not want to break the third law. <laughs> Excuse me? Are you thinking of close encounters of the third no, kind or something? No, no. And Andy's like, you mean the fourth wall? Yeah, the third wall. <laughs> I didn't want to break it. Okay? I, want to break. I can't invite reality TV friends because then we're going to have to film. And they're like, we do shit all the time that's not filmed. And, and, and Tinsley was like, but you put it all over Instagram. Yeah, if you wanted it to be so private, you put it all over your story. We all saw it. But it was private. It and was you, personal. you, no, you like tagged all of us and basically gave us the finger <laughs> from your party. And you said they were your real friends, which is what she did. Remember, she was like, so happy to be here celebrating with all my real friends. I mean... I, I cannot. I can't the, believe this. The thing is, any other housewife pulled this shit, I would be so annoyed and I'd be screaming at the screen. No, but I just laugh. She's so funny. She's so funny. And then Andy brings up, he's like, but Ramona, you're on a reality TV show. How can you say I wanted a moment? She's like, that's why I wanted a moment to myself. He's like, but you're on a reality TV show. If you want a moment to yourself, don't be on a reality TV show. Yeah. You sign up to be a public person. Like Luann. Like, I, you know, I needed some space alone. She just keeps running with this. And then, um, sadly, they get to Ramona and all her very mean comments <laughs> about Bethany's dead ex-boyfriend. How could, how nice could he be? I was on drugs. Stupid. Oh, that was terrible. And then when she, when they show her saying like, oh, Bethany should be over it. She's already dating that guy in Boston. How bad could it be? Oh my lord. So she's like, okay, all I could say is I am sorry to everyone. Sorry to God. Sorry to the Blessed Mother. Sorry to St. Jude. Sorry to my godparents. Sorry to the church. Sorry to Pope Francis. She's all of a sudden in the season finale and here, she's all of a sudden very religious. Yeah, you just have to give me a moment, Andy. I'm actually doing my penance right now in the name of the <laughs> Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I don't remember the Lord's Prayer because I'm not, my mind's not so ageless. Yeah. <laughs> but I would be saying very sorry. Sorry. What else can I say? I'm sorry. Okay, Bethany. But it's not just that. It's that you kept insulting me over and over and over. Dig, slam, bow, this, that. Which is true. Ramona, like, insulted. She's like, you didn't even come up to me. You give me condolences. And instead of saying, I'm sorry for that, it's, you know what, Bethany? You're very scary, okay? You never know if you're going to scratch my eyes out or give me a hug. Very hot and cold. Who's going to give you condolences when you're basically a demon? <laughs> I can't but then at one point she goes I sent her a text I find that the text thing has become a theme with not only the women on this show but the women on a lot of these housewife shows yeah, they're that, able to just get the, out of it remember the Vanderpump scandal with her brother's death that Erica Jane sent a condolence it wasn't good enough the condolences have become a hot button issue yeah but yes, all I, I thought Bethany was gracious with everyone. They showed everyone giving their condolences. And no matter whether it was effusive or not, she was like, thank you, thank you. Ramona didn't do anything. She's like, well, I'm scared, okay? She's like, but how could you like be insulting me after the year I had? Wasn't thinking, okay? Yet again, told you. I, to mention. I thought Bethany handled it fairly well. She wasn't, it didn't seem like she was terribly upset about it because how could you be with she said that she's like i expect yeah. your behavior to be Ridiculous. horrific <laughs> at this point i completely anticipate you being a monster you are medusa so but she isn't i don't okay ramona is pretty monstrous the she, she is does, she's pretty awful but it's i love her it's expected of her and at this point... That's who she is. Yeah. That's really who she is. And I she, bet if they brought Avery on, she'd be like, that's my mom. Yeah, and it's not like she's Danielle Staub. No, I don't think she's out to... And she has a lot of nice moments with Bethany, which are my favorite. I Those like when she gets along at, with her. That the bar upstate, that was nice. Ramona's not all bad. She's really not. She's not like, oh, get rid of her. I can't stand her on the show anymore. She's just... She's crazy. Yeah, she's a character. What are you going to do? Character that I don't care for. <laughs> Oh, by the way, we have another idea for a housewife. We'll yep. get to that. We'll get to that. We'll save that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. So we get the uh, old non-apology apology. I'm sorry you feel that way, Bethany. I'm sorry you feel that way. Guys, if you don't know by now, it's just not an apology. It's actually offensive. It's the worst thing. It's, it's, it's so invalidating. It's like you... you 
ruined my party. You, you, you know, I was very depressed because of it. And then. That's the first I'm sorry thing you feel that way. A therapist will tell you. Yeah. Do not say, I'm sorry. Say, you say nothing at all. Yep. Say nothing. Oh my God. But it's Ramona. It is. It's Ramona. So then she's like, look, I'm trying the best I can. Because Bethany keeps pointing out how awful she is. But that's how I am. And then she's like, you know what? I say terrible things. If Bravo wanted to air that, that's not Bravo. And he's like, don't blame Bravo, okay? All the ladies have said things that they wish they hadn't said. She's sitting there. This is your job, Ramona. It's like, imagine in your job, if you really offended your coworker, you take it to HR, okay? You sit in HR. They're like, did you say these mean things to your coworker, Bethany? You know what? If Macy's wants to make an issue out of it, that's on Macy's. <laughs> You wouldn't have a job. You wouldn't. But this is Ramona Singer. Yeah. And you know what? She's doing the best she can. She is. That's who she is. That was her the most honest After thing she Andy's said. After Andy's like, Ramona, you've been saying this for 11 <laughs> years. And they show it like 11 different times. Look, I'm horrified. I don't know if I'd be my own friend. Okay, I'm doing the best I can. Wow, sorry. Like, it is. It's a montage of the years. You see her aging and saying the same exact thing every year. Okay, and I kind of feel weird saying this, but she looks better now. She does. Than she did when she started. They all do. They got better glam squads and all of that. And better, and like they've gotten work done, which generally upsets me. But their work is good work. It's not like Beverly Hills work. Or Orange County work. (laughs) Andy points out, though, that Bethany and Ramona do seem to share some kind of love. Yeah. He's like, the way you hug each other is not just one of these two. Like, it's a real hug. And Bethany starts crying. And it made me see she really is genuinely hurt. She's not just putting on a show because it's the reunion. I think she really does love Ramona. I think, yeah. Oh, she has. And to. Ramona's like, I do have a kind side. She's like, I know. I wouldn't be sitting here otherwise. Yeah. Aw, come on. I want them to be friends. And then they hugged in the finale. I love that hug. I'd prefer for Mona insult everybody else. Just get along with Bethany. Or just, you know, Bethany, just accept it. You know, I love you. You're but crazy. Bethany does accept it. I think Bethany was just saying, like, as far as you go, Ramona, this was the most vile you've ever <laughs> been. <laughs> it is. Because that's what she's saying. She's like, you know what, Ramona? I have no friends. And you know- <laughs> I, nobody loves me. I'm horrible. All Mention it all. But she's like, but this particular time, I had just gone through quite the tragedy. And you still don't take that in. Like, that's different. It's not just the usual Bethany going, well, well, what's your problem? What's your problem? You know what, Bethany? You have no friends. Nope. You had a terrible childhood. That's on you. She says all those things. But this time, she's like, I was in such a dark, sad place. And you know what I was just thinking? It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And I'm excited. I can't. Imagine something happens to Luann and they have to, like, like remember when... um. Taylor Armstrong's husband killed himself and Bravo had to have a sit down with all the ladies and they were all crying like before the season aired this happened and so they did like a little post airing of the season sit down yeah. with, I remember and Kyle was like you just never know when it's gonna be the last time you see someone and I could see something happening to Luann I don't know why I'm laughing it's just that I'm envisioning Ramona's response like they'd all be like well you know, she had her demons. I remember like, I knew she was drinking, okay? I said it. She would. She would. I tried to tell you. Andy. Andy, you didn't listen. Well, anyway, then Andy brings up the charity event. He's like, I have seen a lot of charity. I've seen a lot of cringeworthy charity, but nothing quite this bad. What do you have to say for She's like, okay, first of all, charity was a success because the law passed. Oh, Ramona Singer single-handedly took because this legislation was languishing for so long yeah the governor wouldn't step in it was just sitting there this this bill that would allow you to sue for sexual abuse and it was protecting the church tons of people involved in this cause yeah but i got it done it's my charity fight with 125 of my friends I, I know powerful people. I'm happy for her. If she got it done, I'm honestly, I'm happy for her. I'm happy, Ramona, that you think you got it done. That's, I'm happy that's, for that's you. That's the best part, that she believes that. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Well, this is another moment I was picturing this Piro as, as a lawmaker yeah. or someone in, <laughs> in the law. Sitting on the couch right yeah. now? Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, sure. Ramona Singer. Single. Why did they name it the Singer Act? <laughs> <laughs> like Megan's Law, we could have had the Singer Act. <laughs> it was all you. <laughs> Cuckoo! <laughs> yeah. Her little, her little clap. Thank you, bozo. It has to happen. Janine Pirro. I'll do it. I'll join the show. As Janine. The entire time. You will know nothing about my real life. Please. That would be so Please. funny. You don't have to pay. Well, For free. You'll, she'll do it for free. I, no, she'll do it for free. Andy, she will do this. For free. I will. Just for his amusement. He would just sit there cackling every Wednesday night. I'll just dress up. Just get me a good wig. That's it. Yeah, we need a good wig because the last time we did Janine, we've done Janine a lot. We had a really gross it's in, wig. It's in my bag of tricks. Yeah. Anyway, so Andy, being the premier shit stirrer that he is, goes, Luann. You wrote the book on etiquette. What did you think of this charity event? I was horrified. Oh, shut up, Luann. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Just shut up, Luann. Oh, you know all about etiquette. Yeah, it shows up in my house in the Berkshires. Get me a massage. Get me, oh, how dare you put me in the fish room. Oh, this was so, and she even says, so, de classe, de passe. Oh, Bethany's fucking losing it. <laughs> I love that Dorita just shut it down. Oh, you're horrified. Just shut up, Louis. <laughs> I love that. I love how she's doing like a little dance with it. You know, I know. This room. <laughs> like she's doing the tango. I love Dorin. How can you hate these women? I love Dorinda, but Dorinda's been a little mean-spirited lately. Oh, I know. Not about this. She's right about this. Like, shut your mouth, Lou. <laughs> I know, I Go know. take your breathalyzer and shut the <laughs> fuck up right now. Horrified. <laughs> and then Ramona chimes in. You see? You see what she just did to you? What Dorinda just did to Luann? She interrupts. That's what she did to me with Bridie. Not just a moment. She's saying, you're so mortified. It's because of Dorinda. She's an interrupter. Just yeah. saying. Dorinda just saying. was trying to help out Ramona in it's that just situation. How I love the speed with which Dorinda shuts Luann down because Luann barely gets a word out when Andy's like, "So what's your opinion?" Oh, I was horrified. Oh, Shut up, Luann. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this part I really didn't find no. very funny. I don't know why the ladies gang up on Tinsley so badly. First of all, it's nobody's fucking business where Tinsley gets her money from. And I think part of the problem here is that out of all of these women, Tinsley's the only one that comes from actual old money. The yeah. rest of them came into money later. Bethany found success much later in life. I don't know what Dorinda's story is, but I don't think Dorinda grew up as rich as Tinsley. No. So Luann didn't. Luann so married into yeah. it. Sonia was a hostess who married into money. And Tinsley's from the type of family where you don't flaunt your wealth. You don't, it's tacky and she's very... And she says that. She goes, it makes me, it's very uncomfortable. She says, I think Tinsley realizes how fortunate she is and she says, I grew up very privileged. You know, it's like, it's rude. It's rude. I remember Carrie Fisher once, I was watching an interview where, I think it was Charlie Rose wanted to know how much money she made for being a script doctor. Uh -huh. And she was like, I don't think it's right to say how much I make for doing that kind of bullshit. It's also when, a stupid question. It doesn't, it, it's just... She knows that she's very lucky. And so, no, you don't talk about your wealth. But, of course, because they keep pushing it, she's forced to explain, no, it's not that Scott gave me an allowance. It's that when I was in trouble and had my mug shot and all of that, they lowered the amount of money I was getting from my trust to see if I could be trusted. And then once she started proving herself that she wasn't being an irresponsible party animal, they gave her her money back. Why is that anybody's business? And then they get to... Andy brings up that Bethany said that Tinsley sets women back 100 years. I have to say, I love Bethany. I'm a big Bethany fan. But on this, no, 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 no. And even during the whole money thing, I felt Bethany was out of hand. I think so, too. But I think 
that's where Bethany's class shows, you know? Yeah. Bethany's not old money. Bethany's like, so where's your money from? Where'd you get rich? How'd you spend money? She's scruffy. How'd you get this stuff? It, you know, it was, all of them showed a lack of class in this moment. Then to say she sets women back a hundred years. This is what I think. Feminism means choice. If you choose to deal with Scott the way Tinsley deals with Scott, that is her choice. If you choose to be like Bethany and go, where's my ring? Where's my ring? That's it. Move on to another one. I date 10 men a year. What's the big deal? She does. She seems to always have irons in the fire. That's why she had one lined up ready to go when the guy died. Yeah. She was dating the hot catering guy. And that doesn't mean she's not a feminist. And that's fine. Bethany can date. Sonia can fuck everybody in Manhattan. Ramona can sleep with Harry Dubin. And Tinsley can be a one-man girl and want to date one guy at a time and take... It's not your business. It's nobody's place to be criticizing her like this. I And then Bethany doubled down because Andy was like, well, she's from the South. And she's like, oh, don't give me that from the South. I went to high school in Atlanta. You went to high school. You went to high Atlanta. school in Atlanta. Just because you spent some time in Georgia does not make you the Tinsley character. Tinsley's a Tennessee Williams Southern Belle debutante. And Richmond, Virginia and Atlanta are very, very different. It's totally different. And when Andy's like, she was a Southern debutante, Bethany. She's doesn't, like, well, doesn't well that sets women back 100 years. And that may be true. You may feel that that mentality is old-fashioned. It is. It, and it is. But, just, but if that's what Tinsley chooses to uphold as her values because that's how she was raised it's her choice and it's not feminist to to harass her no exactly and bethany's very sensitive when people point out that the name skinny girl might not be so feminist and inclusive and it might promote an ideal that's not so healthy she's like no no no. it means that we can all be a skinny girl whether you're skinny or not bullshit okay it was definitely with the intention of promoting dieting and a healthy lifestyle which is fine, but then don't sit there and harass poor Tinsley. It just bothers me mainly because if Tinsley was like a brat and not a kind person, I'd say, okay, fuck Tinsley. But Tinsley has been nothing but nice to all of them. She's a good girl. And then the dog thing. You know, I really feel bad for her. I get it because my dog is part of my family. My mom and my dog, it's like a grandchild. I basically already had the first grandchild with my dog. My mm -hmm. dog Stevie is adorable and they love her to death. That is a family member. And yes, if she was, sadly, if she passed away or something, I would have to wait and everybody would probably want to say goodbye. It would be very hurtful hurtful to them if I just called them and was like, yeah, she's gone. I understand. I think it's a little weird, the freezing thing and calling 911 thing. It's like a little outlandish. I yeah. might not do that. But I get her intention. And Bethany's sitting there going, oh my God, I'm going to lose it during this segment. Fuck you, Bethany. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. Now, I understand like the whole, the church giggles, like, because I suffer from that too. I laugh at really inappropriate things. I mean, you told me you almost drowned and I laughed. That's right. I laughed at my own grandfather's funeral with my brother. We just lost it laughing. I don't know if Bethany was laughing because the situation was absurd if she really just had like a nervous laugh. But I just, in general, didn't like the way she behaved toward Tinsley this whole time. But Dorinda no. ends by saying, look, I'm sorry. We just want to get to know you better. And you're very guarded. And Bethany's like, I feel the same way. I do think... Since they're all saying that Tinsley doesn't share. It must be true. I think it is true to an extent. They're all much scrappier and Tinsley's just from a different upbringing where you don't share that much. I think Tinsley thinks she's very open with them, but their idea of open is not Tinsley's idea of no. open. No, and what I was just thinking is, you know, she had that breakdown at the circus, but I realized it was just between her and Dale, you know? But she, she had a million breakdowns. It's true. She, I, I just think that it's a different mentality. She's not from a family where you talk she about everything. She doesn't yell. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't yell over people. These women talk about everything. Vaginal rejuvenation, who'd you have sex she's with. She's not going to do that. What was your childhood like? She's from a different world. You don't discuss those things. Look at her mother. Have they not met Dale? Tinsley, you don't talk about what goes on with us. No. And I think... Tinsley, for anyway, for me anyway, I've noticed that Tinsley's growing on me more and more. It's not like I've I've disliked her, but I feel like she's becoming more. She's gelling. She is more and more. I love Tinsley. I really do. I think Tinsley is a genuinely kind person. I didn't think it was very nice of Bethany to say that she's not an example of women's empowerment. I don't think that's nice. How is she not an example of women's empowerment? Women's empowerment means be a bitch. No. There's nothing... You know, sometimes you get very far in this world by being like Tinsley. 
sometimes you find a lot of success by being polite and not oversharing and not being abrasive all the time. There's nothing there's nothing harmful about how she's The bottom line is it's none of their business. It made me want to be on the couch and be like how Dorinda was, shut up, Luann. Shut the fuck up, all of you, okay? Leave her alone. It was mean. It was very mean. I, I was really not pleased with this, but there's some comic relief in that they're going to commercial. Luann stands up, and she's like seven feet tall. Yeah. And then Rumor's like, I'll be right back. Sashay, I have to go pee. Her dress almost over her head. I love this little reel of the ladies and their tics. Yeah. They did a cute little editing job where they put together all of the funny things the ladies do over and over. So I never noticed this, actually, but apparently whenever Dorinda goes in a room and sees people, oh! <laughs> Oh, that, that was my favorite. Me too. Me too. And then they show that Bethany always orders for everybody. Anybody want a crab cake? I got some crab cakes coming. I ordered this. I ordered that. And actually, I've seen people criticize Bethany for this a lot and say, oh, what does Bethany order for everyone? But all the ladies said they love it because Bethany knows food. And that was the impression I got. Nobody told Bethany not to order for them. They I, ask her to. I, I, would I would like that. Me too. I'd love it. Then they show that Sonia's always farting. Sonia farts a lot. Which I find very funny. Yeah. They show Tinsley drinking a lot of Pinot Grigio. They show that Luann does not stop saying cabaret, cabaret, Which show, we, show, we show, know. cabaret, cabaret. Performance. And Ramona's is that she's really into herself. I'm hot. Look at my body. I am hotter than hot. Love my boobs. Love my butt. What a body I have. I am hotter than hot. You know what I'm saying, handsome? <laughs> I'm hot. Now, what would Janine's be? I think Janine's would be a montage of her insults. It would just be like one after another. Bozo. Horse. Moron. Liberals. Cuckoo. Demon rats. <laughs> she calls Democrats. Off your rocker. Schizo. It would be like all the things she says about people. And then when they ask her about it, because then they ask them all about it, and Dorinda's <laughs> like, well, who, who do I had a little Oprah in me? And then Bethany explains that that's her thing. They ask her to order. Ramona talks about how, yeah, I'm, I've been really working myself. And Andy's like, in, in what aspect? Because we just caught you in a lot. She's like, I meant physically, Andy. You look great, okay? And then Tinsley, he's like, the Pinot Grigio used to be Ramona's drink. She's yeah. like, well, I drink Pinot Grigio all the time. Dale's fine with it. And then Ramona's like, yeah, I actually switched to um, something that the Millennium Street is called vodka soda. <laughs> They're like, do you mean millennial? A vodka soda. Here's the next one that Ramona has not heard about. This is the latest beverage of choice among young people. It's called the gin and tonic. <laughs> the Millenniums. Yeah, just Ramona, if you want to really get ahead of the curve for next season, take up martinis. Yeah. Actually, a vodka martini. Usually it's made with gin. These days, they make it with vodka. Yeah. And actually, some of them like to put a little olive a lot, juice, yeah. and they call it like a dirty martini. Yeah. It's very edgy. <laughs> My daughter Avery taught me about it. <laughs> I just, the, I can't, I can't. And then he's like, Luann, do you think you talk about cabaret too much? Well, that's what was going on in my life, so. But I'm sure if he said, Janine. <laughs> what do you think of the way that you speak to the other ladies? Look, I'm a loudmouth Bulgarian. I own it. <laughs> That's exactly what We went to her show once, <laughs> and she was talking about her dog, and she said that they named the dog Guinevere or Stella. No, they were going to name her Guinevere, but I think they switched to Stella. She said, because Guinevere was too classy. She's like, because she's a loudmouth like me. No class. <laughs> we were on her show. We were. Maybe we'll we'll show you that one day. There was a Q&A and she asked her a question. As, as her. As her. <laughs> and she did a double take. She was like. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a story for another time. We're trying to tell you enough information without getting arrested. Yeah. <laughs> Then they're giving, again, Ramona is giving Tinsley shit about sleeping and makeup. She's like, you look old and I look young. I, you look so much older than your age. I look younger than you. Ah. I could be your grandma and I look like your daughter. 
and <laughs> doing a dance. And then uh, they you talk about it. And again, I'm like, leave Tinsley alone, okay? She's a, she likes to sleep with her makeup. <laughs> a lot of people do that, all right? But leave the girl what, alone. But what do you look like if you sleep in your makeup? I used to sleep on my makeup just out of pure laziness and it's just, okay, yeah, you have like a little bit of your lashes left and the eyeliner so you look a little bit more feminine, but I don't care anymore. I prefer to put on my skincare routine. But Tinsley always looks so well put together. Like she actually applied the makeup after she got out of bed. Yeah, I don't think she ever films without it or she puts it on and puts setting spray. Oh, Whatever. And then she's like, well, you know what about it? I sleep with my lashes. You sleep with your boobs. That was good. And Drew's like, oh, little shade. Little shit. She's like, she shaded me. Ramona's boobs do look good. Yeah, well, she had them done. Yeah. She, they did great work. And now we turn to the subject of Luann's sobriety. Again. And she says that she feels the ladies, particularly on the Miami trip, are not supportive of her sobriety. And they say, well, you don't take your sobriety seriously. Here's what I think. I think all season long, they catered to her every whim and she abused that. I want a massage. I need a yoga teacher. I need this. I need that. By the time they got to the Miami trip, they were up to here with Lynn. And, and, she, and she was horrible. She was in horrible Miami. in Miami. She did not express herself well and they... Okay, I will agree. They were all shit-faced. Did they all need to be completely plastered around her? Bethany actually looked embarrassed when she's like, you came to me with a drink in your hand. I don't think she should have been embarrassed. I think she's just trying to own. She's like, okay, maybe that was insensitive. But Luann never said, hey, ladies, I'm really having a hard time. I, you know, while we're on this trip, I need to go to meetings. And, you know, I understand you want to have fun, but maybe you could try not to, like, fall off the table drunk like last night. She didn't. She handled it very, like... You owe me something. If she approached it like, guys, I really, like, it's a team effort. I need your help, like, to stay on the wagon. I'm I'm very shaky with this. But she didn't. She had no humility. That's where they're like, fuck you. And now, yeah, she's using this as an excuse to get back at them. The reunion, the way she's talking, it's now, you know, if it mattered that much to her in the moment, I think she would have said something. Yeah, it's like her her one card to play. Oh, well, you all got drunk in front of me. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. And then she's like, well, you know, I had a slip and blah, blah, blah. And then that leads to how she left rehab after two weeks. And she's insistent that she did not. She says that, you know, she doesn't really think she has an alcohol problem, which tells me she's going to drink again once her probation's over. And then she's going to be in big trouble. And she's like, it was a lot of things. And Bethany's like, I don't know, Ramona, you had a breakdown. You had a nervous breakdown. She had a breakdown. It's a nervous breakdown. Listen, sweetie pie. And then... Luann starts getting mad because Bethany's like, you had a mental breakdown. You're not my psychologist. I have a psychologist and he's my psychologist. Okay. But Bethany's pointing out it was disrespectful that we all made this tremendous effort to put you through rehab and you had your phone the whole time, which you are so not supposed to have. She's like, they let you have your phone. You're texting me about this house and all this bullshit. And she ends up tangling with Ramona because Ramona's really annoyed and Ramona's not buying this crap. And she's like, you know what, honey pie? It didn't work for you, ABC. You didn't last for two weeks. Then you go back for four months. And she's like, don't talk to me, Miss Pino Grigio. And on top of that, there was a viewer's question, questioning Luann's mental health, which finally it's actually it's being out in the addressed. Open. They all admit she had a manic episode. So we know she has some kind of mental disorder, probably bipolar, which she should not be drinking. It doesn't matter whether you're just a classic textbook alcoholic or not. You can't drink. You cannot take mind-altering substances. And when you have something like bipolar, depression, alcohol compounds all of that. And if you're also on medications for bipolar, she doesn't take it seriously. She's going to have a big problem. And I, for once, agree with Ramona Singer, which is like, you know what, Luann? How about this? What do you think of this? I think you're still drinking on the side. How about that? How about that, Luann? Oh, she most certainly is. And she will continue to do so. And this is not going to end well. But. I'm happy that we have a part three. I thought we were only getting two I did parts. Too. We, we have, got three. We have Barb the Builder coming up. And we were thinking of another cast edition. Yes. Miss Kathy Lee Gifford. We will work her into that next week. So you have that to look forward to. But we're thinking it would be not just one or the other. I think it should be Janine Pirro and Kathy Lee because they're so opposite. 
Janine Pirro is like, you know, such a New York yeah. rough and tough and Kathy Lee's Miss Jesus, la la la. So, and, and I just, we, we have some thoughts on that. We have some thoughts. It seems that Tinsley may not be coming back. Who knows what Luann's future is looking like. But I want Luann there just because Janine would hate oh, her. Oh, that's right. And because then she and Kathy Lee could compete over their songs. I'm very excited. Kathy Lee writes songs about everything. Some really offensive songs that she doesn't realize are offensive. If you want to, you know, look into the song she wrote for the mentally handicapped kid. It Is was that an what autistic you're... child. Autistic child. It was. She she had a segment for a while called Everyone, Everyone Has a Story. Everyone has a story that changes. This is another thing we don't really need to know anything about, but we do. She had on a little boy with autism, and she wrote a song for him. And the song was... Look this up. Look up Kathy Lee insults autistic boy. Because she wrote this song that was basically like, Imagine being a loser. Sitting no all one, alone. No one will be your friend. It's so awful. <laughs> and, and, I he's was just in, and he's crying. And he's crying. And she's like, did you like your song, buddy? It made me really sad. Yeah, he's crying. And she goes, oh, made you sad. Well, I'll have to jazz it up for you next time. So I was thinking of her, like, wanting her songs played after feeling Giovanni. Yeah. What about my song, Andy? What about he saw Jesus, Andy? Yeah. And then Luann having to come and go, different genre. <laughs> and she would be singing along. Mm-hmm. And Janine Pirro would despise her. <laughs> despise her, as would Ramona. Yeah, Andy would be like, Janine, what do you think of Luann and Kathy Lee? I think they both suck. <laughs> she would. She would. <laughs> Let's just say neither of these two birds will be selling out Madison Square Garden anytime soon. <laughs> So, oh, on that note, that note, get it? That note. We're very silly today. We are. The reunions do that to us and wish us luck because now we've decided to cover Beverly Hills. Just the reunions. She's just going to cover. I'm just going to sit there and pout. I felt I should. We've gotten a few requests about Beverly Hills and Camille Grammer's there. And I just, <laughs> I mainly just want to shit all over them and imitate all of them and mock them. So... That's what we're heading into. We're going from enjoying New York to loathing. Loathing Beverly Hills. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of our comments. Um, please and Big Little Lies is almost over, thank God. Yeah, we're almost done with that torture. So, But there's a lot to look forward to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, subscribe, comment. We eat it up. So thank you. Bye.